Hello, another car boot find here is a Regulac made by Claude Lyons Limited in England. Now, this is a Variac, which is a variable AC power supply. Although it's got AC and it's also got 0 to 240 DC. Uh, this one's got the brown pins on it, so you can't sort of mix them up. Now, this is a 10 amp version. I've had this for years. This is a uh, 110 volt converter, which is great for when you get the odd item that's American or something. You need that kind of voltage when you're sitting down and repairing something. But this isn't very good. This is only 100 watts and uh, it just, yeah, it's just one of those things that ain't great. Uh, this, however, at 240 volts, 10 amps is 2,400 watts, which is uh, much nicer. Anyway, if we look on here on the multimeter, you'll see that it actually starts at 1.9 volts. And then I can dial in the voltage to American voltage ish, which is 110 to 115. Uh, go all the way up to British voltage, which is 220 to 240. I think ours is about 245 here. But this can overshoot to 288 volts. Now, when I take this apart to have a look at it, I'll show you how it overshoots, how it manages to give more voltage. It's not rocket science. It's quite simple, really. But... Uh, the person I bought this off, I actually paid £4 for this on the car boot sale. And the person I bought it off, she says, oh, it was her dad's. He used it to wedge the garage door open. It's got a little handle and it's very heavy. Oh, oh well, never mind. Anyway, I'm going to open it up and uh, give it a little bit of a service. We can have a look inside it. And, uh, well, let's get on with it, shall we? Screwdriver time. Now, I can see what the problem is with the uh, arrow not lining up. Down at zero, it's about 32 volts. But fortunately, it will just be a matter of lining that up to zero and then tightening it back up. And that should sort that problem out at least. But uh, I'll just take that off for now because I'm going to give that a nice clean up. And underneath this plate, I'm not too sure, but on the internet, some other guys have flipped them over and they're blue on the other side and instead of having 0 to 260 they've got 0 to 100 percent instead so i'll just have a, a look at this oh there's a surprise it's exactly the same only in reverse uh not quite sure why that would be unless you put it on the back oh well, never mind anyway I've had a look on the internet, this Regulac. Now, Claude Lyons, apparently, in 1933, they started off with the trade name Variac, making these. And then later they had other names like uh, Regavolt and Varatran. Anyway, I've uh, undone all the screws here. We can have a look down inside. Oh, if I get the cables right. There you go, very nice. And there is your winding. It's a bit dirty, so it needs a bit of a clean up. Now I'm gonna clean the contacts up here. Uh, and this is the part that's got the sort of brush connector on it that touches the top. And that's how the voltage is selected from zero all the way round to 240, which would be about there. And then that overshoot, which will take it up to about 288. So, actually, that's not too bad, that. I'm going to see if I can find some sort of date or year of manufacturing here. But uh, that's actually not bad condition. Now, on the meters, I've just noticed, there is a date. 1974-4. So it's April 1974 when the meter was made, at least. So, uh, yeah, it's it's all in pretty good condition. Just in need of a, a clean up and a little bit of oiling or something, I guess. Oh well. Let's try and get this thing out. This is bloody heavy. And that's what it looks like down 
the top there. There's all your connections to the transformer or the coil or whatever you wish to call it. And uh, also in the top there is your little diode array to turn it into DC. So yeah, very nice. Let's get that out and give it a clean. Now looking in here, it's got the old socket still on the side there for the AC. And this has obviously been added at a later stage. And uh, using the rectifier in the back there to make a, a DC output. Now I'm quite happy to lose this rectifier and take all this off because I think it would look a lot neater if it's still got its old original plug on there for the AC. So what I might do is just strip all this away, get rid of it, get rid of the rectifier and just use it as, uh, you know, as it was intended as an AC variable transformer. So I'm going to unscrew these sockets here and get this block off because as you can just see in the top there, I think that's the old plug socket. So hopefully if that's in good condition, I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of the rectifier. I'm not going to use DC, 240 volts DC. There you go. I've unscrewed this and there's the original socket underneath it. Yeah, it's a bit dusty and a bit dirty. So what? But I'm going to take this off and uh, I'll try and find some sort of grommet to fill this hole in. But I think the original socket on the side is much better than this thing anyway. I mean, it's, it's already cracked. And, and breaking. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to strip all this off and get it down to its, well, as much of its original as I can. So get the rectifier out and we'll rewire this AC back into this old socket and try and get it back to its original shape. Now there's some very tiny paint marks on here. I think somebody's been using a paint sprayer somewhere close by and the easiest way to get this off Bakelite is with just a little bit of Jif or Sif because they've changed the name again. So just rub it nice and lightly and hopefully that'll remove the very tiny specks of paint that's on there. Right I've polished the one on the left I've used a bit of Jif to get all the paint up and then if you just use a little bit of uh, beeswax afterwards it makes it all nice and shiny again so that's one way of uh, getting these things to look almost new again so just a little trick there right I've cleaned up the uh, contacts and things on this as well hoovered it all out got rid of all the wildlife that used to live in there and now I'm just going to redress some of the cables so nothing actually sits against the coils and then get it together and give it a little test, make sure it's all working okay. Right, I've wedged uh, two coins under there just to lift the button up very, very slightly and set it at zero. And now, just give it its last sort of tightening up that way. That now sits at zero all the way around to 270. Right, okay, let's get this baby back together and give it a test. Right, I've taken all this out because I don't think it's necessary really to have that just because of the DC. There's a nice big chunky rectifier there. I think that will go in my parts box for something else. Mm, might have a use for it. But uh, I think the original plug on the side is very nice. I can fill these little holes in and that is the right size just for a grommet to push on there. So I've got to find one of those. I've got one somewhere, but I don't know where. That's uh, another task. Right, now I'm going to plug it in and see if everything's okay. So, multimeter at the ready. And 
mains back into that side. Power on. Mm, it's buzzing anyway. Okay, let's see what we've got. Zero. So if I take that to 20. Mm, yep, yeah, close enough. 40. Yep. Yeah. 60. Well, we've got 63 there. I'll take it to 100. If that lines up with 100, we've got 103 on there and just over 100 there. So, yeah, it's, it's close enough. 120. If I actually get it at 120, though, on the digital multimeter, it's quite a fine adjustment. Yeah, it's as near as damn it. Bring it round to 240. Right, 248. And that says, yeah, 248, nearly 250. I think the reason for that is our voltage here is actually about 248. So, you know, it should be 220 to 240, but for some reason we've got a reasonably high voltage. So, there you go. 285 when that should be 270. But other than that, it's very smooth. So, and it sounds much better. So yeah, I think that's going to come in use for something one day. Anyway, let's try and explain how these actually work. In a transformer, this is a standard transformer, what you normally get is a primary winding and then a secondary winding. This has got several taps on it, I'll explain that in a moment. But this is a, a standard sort of power transformer. And what happens inside that is if it's a step-down transformer, which this is, if you have, say, in here 240 volts at 1 amp going in, and it's a 10 down to 1, then on this side you'll have 24 volts, because it's a 10 to 1 ratio. But what happens with the amps is the amps goes up by 10, so you'll have 24 volts and 10 amps. Now, on a step up transformer, say you have to make it simple, 10 volts going in at 10 amps, and it's a 1 to 10 ratio, then this side you will have 100 volts, but only 1 amp. That's a power factor of uh, 100 watts. That's an ideal transformer. There's no such thing as an ideal transformer with 100% efficiency. Normally, the uh, efficiency of a transformer is K, which is a measure of the degree of coupling between the primary and secondary coils of a transformer. And the best you can achieve at the moment is about 0.98. So if you put 100 volts in, you'll get 98 volts out the other side if it's a one-to-one -one transformer. So what happens in the transformer is this is your primary. Let's do that again. So you've got your 10 volts and your 10 amps. And that magnetizes this core. This one's a, a sort of an iron core because this is iron. But you have different types. Some of them are ferrite rings and there's, there's several different types of transformers that you can have. Uh, and so out of this side we're having 100 volts at 1 amp. So what happens is there's a magnetic flux. This voltage, AC, you can only sort of use AC on transformers, that induces a magnetic flux. That pen's no good, excuse me. Let's try a blue one. So that induces a magnetic flux going around the iron core. And that obviously changes backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, because of the AC cycle. And this side changes that magnetic flux back into power. And depending on the amount of windings that you've got on there, say this is 10 to 1, then you'll have 100 volts, but 1 amp. Now, in a Regulac, a different thing happens. So, in a Regulac, what you've basically got, 
Regulac or Variac or whatever the name is of them, depending on the manufacturers, you have your neutral travelling straight through. Now, your coil winding, excuse my uh, bad drawing here, that's the coil, say. Okay, your primary at 240 volts will connect around there. So that's 240 volts AC. Okay, going into the coil. Now, your secondary, because it's variable, that sort of works like so. And that is, say, halfway, so you're going to get 120 volts out there. Or, if you move the variac up and past the 240 volts into this range, we're now going to get 280 volts. But the same thing applies. This is uh, creating a magnetic flux inside the ring and the coil goes around it and that's simply how the variac works. There's another type of transformer which is just a one-to-one -one transformer and what happens is it has the same amount of windings in as comes out the other end. These three lines basically denote that it's uh, an iron core flux. So if you have 240 coming in here, you'll have 240 coming out there, or near as damn it because of your little bit of loss due to the coefficient of coupling. Now on a multi-tap transformer, what you get inside is the same sort of thing as all the other transformers. Instead, what happens is you have several taps coming off it. So this might be 0 volts, uh, 10 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts. So you have uh, different uses. There's your 12 volts and there's 15 volts and that's 10 volts. And that's basically how a multi-tap transformer works. It's just tapped at different parts in the coil or the winding so there you go there's the variac all nicely cleaned up all in good working order thank you very much for watching now i've got to try and find a use for it hmm <laughs> now there's a possibility <laughs>